Hello third graders and welcome to today's lesson. Today we are going to discuss our new story, Weird Friends. We will talk about the weird friendships that we find between animals. We will discuss the author's purpose behind writing the text and the main idea of the text. We will also talk about the genre or the type of the story, which is an informational text. So let us first begin by discussing the weird friendships between animals. First, we have the blind shrimp and the goby. Now, the blind shrimp are completely blind, but it knows how to get help. It digs a hole in the sand, crawls in, and waits for a goby fish to swim in for shelter. The goby has a place to hide, and the blind shrimp has a guide to lead it when it's safe to go out. While they're feeding, the shrimp's antennae feel the goby's every move. If a predator approaches, the goby flicks its tail and the two swim quickly back into their safe burrow. What a cool friendship that is! Next, we have the forest mouse and the beetles. Take a look at this illustration. How do you think these two are friends? Well, the beetles cling to the fur and the face of the forest mouse, but the mouse doesn't mind it at all because the beetles eat the fleas that infest its fur. During the day while the mouse sleeps, the beetles dismount and eat the bugs in the mouse's burrow. The beetles are always well fed and the mouse and its house are free of itchy insects. Wow, what a really weird friendship we have here. Moving on to the clownfish and the sea anemone. Hmm. The bright little clownfish needs protection from its enemies, so it chooses a poisonous sea anemone to be its bodyguard. For about an hour, the clownfish carefully darts in and out of the anemone's deadly tentacles. Little by little, it becomes immune to their sting. Then it moves in. The clownfish is safe from predators, so is the anemone, because its enemy, the butterfly fish, is afraid of the clownfish's bite. Interesting. Moving on to the rhino and the cattle egret. Now, how do you think a mammal like rhinos and a bird like egrets are friends? Well, let me tell you. Now, as they graze across the plain, a rhino and her calf stir up grasshoppers. But the rhino can't see very well and may not notice danger approaching. So she lets a sharp-eyed cattle egret perch on her back to act as a lookout. The egret is rewarded with an endless feast of grasshoppers. If the egret spies danger, it screams. And if that doesn't get the rhino's attention, it taps on the rhino's head until the mother and baby gallop to safety. How cute is that? Now we have the ostrich and the zebra. Ostriches have terrific eyes. Zebras have terrific ears. When the two get together, nothing can sneak up on them. That's why ostriches and zebras often roam the savanna together chomping on seeds and grasses. The ostriches look and the zebras listen for predators. The first to detect a hungry lion warns the other. And before it can attack, they all flee to safety. Hmm. Now let us move on. Red phalaropes and the sperm whale. Now this is a strange or weird friendship indeed. Let me tell you why. Because the whale is a really, really big mammal. And how is it friends with the red phalaropes when they are tiny birds in comparison to how big whales are? The red phalaropes follow a pot of sperm whales as they swim far out to sea. The birds hover over the water and wait for a whale to come up for air. 
As soon as a whale surfaces, the birds land on its back and begin to pry parasites from cuts and cracks in its skin. Being free of these pests make the whale feel better, and the phalaropes enjoy a tasty meal, but the birds have to eat quickly, because once the whale blows, it takes a breath, slaps its tail, and dives deep into the ocean. Now we have the red ants and the large blue butterfly. When red ants find a particular type of caterpillar, they lug it back to their nest. There, they tickle its tummy till it oozes the sweet honeydew they love to sip. In return, the ants feed the caterpillar all it can eat. The caterpillar lives unharmed in its ant's nest for 11 months, eating and pupating. Finally, it emerges as a large blue butterfly, shakes out its wings, and flies away. Soon, the ants will go in search of another caterpillar. Now, let us move on to the hermit crab and the sea anemones. Well, when a hermit crab needs a new home, it finds an empty shell, moves in, and sticks sea anemones on top for protection. The anemones' stinking tentacles scare away octopuses, which love to eat hermit crabs. Anemones can't walk, so the crab provides them with transportation to new feeding spots. And because crabs are messy eaters, there are always food scraps for the anemones to nibble. How cute. <laughs> okay, now we also have another weird friendship, which is the impalas and the baboons. At the water hole, a herd of delicate impalas stay close to a troop of tough baboons. The impalas use their excellent sense of smell, hearing, and sight to detect danger. If the impalas notice a predator approaching, they dance nervously. That warns the baboons who bear their fangs and snarl to scare the attacker away. How interesting is this? Moving on... To the horse mackerel and the Portuguese man of war. I know, that's such a strange name. Okay, now, by looking at the illustration, how do you think these two sea creatures are friends? Well, when the horse mackerel is pursued by an enemy, it races for home. The mackerel's home is a colony of small organisms living together called a Portuguese man of war. It has a venomous ribbons that can reach 70 feet long that shoot, uh, and that shoot paralyzing barbed harpoons into whatever they touch. But they don't harm the horse mackerel because it doesn't feel their sting. The mackerel is safe and the man of war is well fed because any predator that comes too close will end up as the man of war's dinner. Hmm, that's scary. I can imagine how scary that must feel. Okay, now we have the hippo, the oxpeckers, and the black labial fish. The hippo can't scrub itself, so it wades into the river and waits for oxpeckers to land on its back. These birds pick off and eat ticks and other bothersome bugs. Meanwhile, in the water below, black labio fish gobble up anything clinging to the breast of the hippo. When all the parasites have been removed, the hippo naps in the cool mud. Lazy hippo. He cannot clean himself. Therefore, he needs the help of oxpeckers and black labio fish. But it's still cute. I really think hippos are cute. The Tuatara and the Sooty Shearwater. Hmm. The Tuatara is a slow and lazy reptile. It rarely even builds its own nest. Instead, the Tuatara finds a Sooty Shearwater's clifftop burrow and moves in while the bird is out. But, Tuata but the Tuatara is a good guest. It licks up every last slug, moth, worm, and beetle in the tunnel. When the sooty sheer water returns, the nest is clean and the tuatara is welcome to stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have really good hospitality, I can tell. Now we have the ras and the google eye fish. 
When the ras is hungry, it dances on its head and wags its tail to announce that its cleaning station is open. Soon, lots of filthy Google Eye fish are lining up for a bath. Like a small vacuum with teeth, the ras nips gunk from gills and scores parasites off scales. All the fish get a good washing and the ras has a hearty meal. And last but not least, we have the water thickness and the crocodiles. Hmm, interesting. How aren't they getting eaten by crocodiles? This is one weird friendship. Now I'll tell you why. A bird called a water thick knees sometimes builds its nest next to a crocodile's home. When the crocodile leaves to go hunting, the bird watches both of their nests. If trouble threatens the eggs or young in either nest, the bird screeches until the crocodile comes charging home. The water thick knees and her family are safe be beside their ferocious neighbor because the crocodile will not eat its babysitter, of course. Okay, aren't they such strange, weird friendships? Yes, they are. Now we are going to talk about the genre of the story. Now the genre of the story is an informational text. An informational text provides factual information to readers, okay? So an informational text is real, okay? Any story that you read that is an informational text, it means that you will find facts that inform, teach, or explain to you something. And we obviously, uh, we were informed and we learned that there are weird fr friendships out there in ecosystems. Moving on to the author's purpose. Now, why did the author write this text? He wrote it to inform us. The author tries to teach you something or give you information. What was the main idea of the text? Well, to begin with, the main idea is what the text is about. And the details are the evidence that supports the main idea. Now, the main idea was that many animals have weird friendships that help one another survive in their environment. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, sweethearts.